Okay, so for the first talk, it was supposed to, um, so we had a swap. Um, uh, where is it? Where are we now? On Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, so, in, so we're going to have uh, um, Milenko Stasik in, instead of um, uh, the original talk because, uh, uh, a lot, as I mentioned, a lot of people got stuck uh, uh, in the Frankfurt airport yesterday. Um, but some made it, and so we do some ad hoc uh, switch. Um, and so I think for the, for the introduction, I can just say that um, Milenko here has been working. So this is really spontaneous now, <laughs> because I'm not prepared. But uh, Milenko is um, has, um, he's from Darmstadt. Uh, and um, he has uh, joined the uh, uh, Summer of Code and Space initiative uh, organized by ESA last year, uh, where he worked on uh, a GNU radio project. Um, currently, he is at the uh, University or of, of Applied Sciences in Darmstadt, and um, he's very excited to uh, tell you all about his technical developments that he did. So please give him a big hand of applause and welcome him. So, thank you, Arthur, for the warm introduction. Um, I'm Elenko from TU Darmstadt Space Technology. And this will be about the um, development of our CubeSats communication system based on CCSDS and ECSS standards. So at first, a picture of our group. So we've grown a little bit since then. We are now 60 students. We are entirely students, so we do not belong to any institute. Our mission um, composes of three things. At first, outreach. We host an open lecture series at our university, which is open to the public and um, available on YouTube after each um, session. We do experimental rocket development. In the future, we hope that we can do also liquid uh, rocket engines. And we, of course, try to build our own CubeSat. Our own CubeSat will be entirely open source. Um, because of budget, we have a one unit CubeSat. We wanted to go bigger, but not possible yet. Um, it will be a technology demonstration of a reflector ray antenna, which we develop ourselves. And it will be based on ECSS and CCSDS standards regarding software quality and um, communications. So Arthur gave earlier an introduction to CCSDS and ECSS, so we can skip that. Um, here's the equivalent with the OSI layers of um, what he showed earlier. And um, we are trying to implement the whole protocol stack. So not just the radio frequency and modulation systems or maybe the synchronization, but the, the entire stack. And um, the good thing about the CCSDS standards is when um, I went through the floor and saw these novel packet uh, protocol, um, you don't have to think about implementing a new protocol. It's all there, you can take it, it's for free all these standards you can access. But there's, of course, when standardization comes into play, always the question about user friendliness. And um, yeah, if you go to, through all these standards, you are at at least 1,300 pages, which you should read or read. And um, even more, they're not, are green books by the CCSDS, which explain a little bit more in detail how to use them. And yeah, it's, it's really a pain. And for one human, it's not possible. So we decided to join Arthur with his LibreCube initiative and um, do the developments together with him. And at ESA, we has, have more uh, resources about how to, to do it because they are the people using them. So there are pros and cons. Everything is for free. Um, the standards are robust, proven, and um, if you use them, it enables cooperation because um, it is necessary to cooperate because it's too much just for us to implement them, but it also um, would make it possible to work together with others and exchange code. 
which comes to the next point, reusability. So you can use um, parts of your code on your uh, ground station or on the mission control center or even on the satellite. Um, it is difficult to understand these standards and um, there's overhead generated, but um, the CCSDS is aware of that and in, for example, I will show later an example um, with the unified space data link, they are trying to get rid of um, a bit of this overhead. And for CubeSats, of course, there are unused functionalities, but you can cut out some of the functionalities and still conform, be conformed to the standard so you don't have to implement everything because you don't want to drive a rover or something like that. So how I got into it was the summer of code in space in 2017. I did the CCSDS train exchange over radio link in GNU radio and yeah, started to play with GNU radio. This is what it ended up with and shows some of the problems when using GNU radio. Um, it's for, for another person, it's impossible to understand what I did. And um, when I set up my machine again and tried to run it, it was, of course, impossible because there were blocks missing, there were version changes, um, some functionality changed, but was not documented. So, yeah, super. So we come to the problems, not just of GNU Radio, but this slide is mainly for GNU Radio now. There were bugs. Um, the installation is a pain. So there are like four to five different methods described to install GNU Radio. And it depends on which um, Ubuntu version, for example, you run, which version of GNU Radio will be installed and you have very little control of that. And yeah, so it's, it's quite difficult to get it run on a different machine. So afterwards, um, we worked out some solutions. One of them is using Docker. We started um, setting up a, a Docker file for installing GNU Radio to make it easier to deploy. Um, we will not use um, GNU Radio anymore for packet detection or anything that has to do with, uh, with the data in the end. We will do this outside of GNU Radio. We will stream a bit stream out with a zero message queue or TCP or something like this and do it in Python externally because it's easier to control. We exchanged our hackref to an uh, Lime SDR, which is still not perfect, but a lot better. And um, we try to keep things simple because um, GNU radio blocks are often with a functionality you don't want. So this is just a simplified block. This is not working in real life, but uh, to show you that it can be a little easier when you do the data processing outside. So the next step will be to do the synchronization and uh, channel coding. This is on top of the RF modulation systems. Um, it allows um, error control coding and we will do read Solomon coding. Um, so there's frame validation, synchronization, and pseudo-randomizing, and everything is written um, at first in Python, and la later on it will be in C++. Um, earlier I mentioned the unified space data link. Um, this was one of the over 100 pages, and the essence is that there are virtual channels um, where you can, for example, separate your um, telemetry data from science data, but merge them into one physical channel. And in the end, you can separate them easily and route them to different um, servers. So this is what it looks like. We are using Atom IDE and um, write it in, in Python. And for all of you who may ask what is this green stuff over there, it's called documentation. So we will document everything and we are doing this with Sphinx, with the nice Read the Docs team, which we like very much. And um, everything is available on, on GitHub. This is not yet available, but it will be in the next weeks 
up there, so I already have the data, but um, the one who built it didn't upload it yet. So yeah, and this is not finished yet, but um, we wanted to already um, make the prototypes public so you can see what we're doing and maybe contribute to it. So these are the active prototypes at the moment. Arthur is working on the message abstraction layer. We don't, uh, and we are working from the bottom. So I'm doing radio frequency and modulation systems. And uh, we do the unified space data link and Teremi synchronization and uh, channel coding. So thank you all for your attention. If you have any questions, please ask. Thank you, Milenko. So, questions? Comments? I'll bring it to you. Okay. Could you tell a little bit more about the HackRF to Lime SDR transitions? Uh, some of the things that you um, that you found, reasons why, motivations. Yeah. The, 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 for me, the main reason is um, that. Um, the HackRF is half duplex, so um, it will never be possible to use it unless you have two of them. The other thing is the hardware reset. You have to do a hardware reset when you, you change anything, and um, this would never be possible to run in a ground station for operations, because you would always have, or you, or you have to solder anything on the PCB to reset it every time, and that's stupid, so. More questions? For some feedback? Okay, uh, then I have a question. Just in the back. Okay, good. Thank you for making all that open source. Yeah, <laughs> no problem. Okay, maybe uh, for uh, just as a question also to the entire audience. Um, so as you can see, the, the, the problem was here that uh, within this project, uh, the initial idea was to put everything into the GNU radio, into the block diagram. So the entire processing, uh, so demodulating the data and uh, getting the frame data, reconstructing the frame. Um, but now I think we, the focus is more on building a kind of radio replacement yeah, where you get RF a bit stream out. Yeah, so it's more on our RF front end in the software defined radio and the data is outside. So what is the experience from the audience who work with GNU radio? Do you tend to put like all your logic into a block diagram or do you also at some point uh, make a cut and say this is then data that I feed into other processes that are running either Python scripts or uh, FPGA devices? Who works with new radio? Okay. <laughs> so uh, for me, I put most or all of my logic into the GNU radio flow graph, but I tend to uh, use message PDUs a lot. So what I do is to say in the decoding chain, extract the message PDU really soon, and then pass it between different blocks which work on message PDUs. So that's more or less us working outside GNU Radio with regular Python code. I tend to do it mostly in Python. Okay, thank you. Oh, I'm coming. Yeah, exactly. If, you, if your data rate is low enough, I use uh, PMT messages. And, uh, but if it's going higher, PMT, the overhead of PMTs is uh, it's very big, so stay out of it. Uh, I will go for the I will go for the GNU radio. Uh, it has a very solid background or, and uh, many blocks that do the job for you. Uh, just uh, build uh, a solid uh, out of three module, release uh, the code, and uh, eventually people will uh, interested and uh, contribute back. Okay. Why going to a custom solution? Okay. And reinvent the the wheel. So. I, I think a bit, of, uh, you told about uh, installation issues. Yeah. Okay, uh, perhaps you, you, 
you haven't spent enough time to, le to learn about uh, the linking uh, issues that uh, Google Radio has. There are some issues, yes, but they, you can overcome it. Okay. So yeah, I will give again a try. Yeah, I'll, I'll try it again. My personal <laughs> opinion. <laughs> Okay, thank well, you. Well, I'm sure he can overcome the problems, but the question is the user, you know, that we have so many, and the deployment of uh, GNU Radio is, is really painful. I think there were some experience, somebody told me yesterday over a beer, all the problems with GNU Radio, but maybe now it's, it will miss fine. Most of the platforms right now have uh, pre-built packages for GNU Radio. So yeah, eventually if uh, you publish uh, your out of three module, perhaps uh, your module become a package too. It have it is already it is already done for the GR Osmo. Uh, in Debian you can find uh, GR Osmo SDR in uh, in a package and many others. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, when it's working, I will uh, contribute it. One more last question, GNU Radio. I mean, this is now the time to speak up. <laughs> okay. It's not a GNU Radio one, but what kind of licenses do you use and why? What uh, kind of license for software and for hardware? That's an excellent question, uh, and I'm prepared for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we, we had the discussion in our group and I um, also opened it to the Libre Space community. <laughs> and um, the solution, um, I don't know if the guy's here, Elkos, but I guess he's one of, uh, of, of your group, yeah? Um, was to use the um, GPL version three and the open hardware uh, licensed by SAN. And um, we had a discussion and we also decided to, to do a strong copy left because we're a non-profit organization and there's no reason why anyone should um, use it for their business and not contributing to it. Yeah. So strong copy left on everything. Question. More questions? No? Thank you, Milenko, again.